Hello, in this video I'm going to discuss a second order system and the, fine, the files that I'm going to use for SOLIDWORKS I'm going to use SOLIDWORKS Motion Analyzers to do some experiments for system dynamics and those files you can find over here on the GrabCAD website and here you see that I put all the files for the various analyzers so zero, first and second order systems I put them all under one link so you can download the files that I'm going to use in this video yourself to experiment I've got this file open in SOLIDWORKS Motion already so you need SOLIDWORKS Premium for that and I've entered a spring between the mass and the, the solid world so to say and the spring also has damping you see the damping constant over here and you don't see the damping in the preview but when the check mark is activated the damping is taken into account so here you see uh, what kind of simulations I'm gonna run I'm gonna play this uh, this movement for now but before I'm gonna analyze those movements I'm gonna go over to a presentation, short presentation to show what I'm gonna discuss so that's over here I'm gonna show a system with a mass, a spring and a damper which is a, a second order system and as stated over here whenever you do that you should always draw a free body diagram and I've done that here the free body diagram you just delete the springs, the dampers and the, the solid world and replace all the components that can deliver a force in this case the, the spring, the damper and the force that is actually acting upon the mass you, you replace all springs and dampers by those forces and then in dynamics you also have to draw the kinematic schedule and then it's simple you just add all the blue arrows and that's the sum of all forces and it's equal to m multiplied by the, the acceleration so I've done the maths for that already on this sheet this is a Laplace transform there's uh, some complex mathematics going on behind that but the easy way of doing a Laplace transform is just uh, changing every uh, uh, dot above every variable which is a, a differentiation of that variable so change every dot by an S and that's what I've done over here and then you get the transfer function which uh, is a, a ratio of output divided by input in this case the input is the force and the output is going to be the displacement so this, uh, this transfer function always has this shape and therefore the natural frequency always has this equation when you enter all the variables over here divide them by k uh, to get the, this, uh, this equation over here you'll always find that for this general form the natural frequency is the spring constant divided by the mass and the damping coefficient is actual damping divided by critical damping and you see the equation over here so that's that's always the case these values are always the same when using a second order system so when uh, when using a, a spring a mass and a damper uh, a damper you always get these equations so here I've got uh, some MATLAB plots of varying damping constants damping coefficients so I've got the commands over here for MATLAB and then you see you get a lot of graphs for various damping coefficients so the purple line is the highest damping and the blue line here is the, the least damping so if you have MATLAB you can test those uh, those commands over here and you'll find these multiple graphs by using the LTI so Laplace transfer interactive viewer command so in this case it looks like a damping coefficient of 5 the, the green line has an, a nice bit of natural frequency so I'm going to analyze that version so you see I've got the, the, the Bode diagram already of a situation in which the damping coefficient is 5 you see the MATLAB uh, command over here and now I'm going to see in SOLIDWORKS what happens so these are the three arrows of the three simulations that I'm going to do in SOLIDWORKS motion I'm going to switch over to SOLIDWORKS motion I see I've got actually got four motion studies defined in this assembly uh, the last one is done twice so it's a uh, it's done with another time scale to be able to show you some extra plots so for example first I'm gonna run it at the low frequency you see the speed is in this case one so it's pretty pretty low frequency you can actually see the part moving whereas in this case I'm in the natural frequency I've decreased the time the speed to one fourth so one quarter of the original speed because otherwise you wouldn't see much anymore 
and now I'm in the natural frequency of this graph and that means that some strange stuff will happen so if I press play you actually see that the, the when you uh, enter a natural frequency onto a construction then the, the uh, displacement can incre will increase until the construction is broken and in this case you see that the spring and the spring goes into a negative area so goes into negative which means that this is actually not what really could happen you can see the masses moving through each other so SOLIDWORKS will take that into account when analyzing a natural frequency it's not uh, completely correct of course you could uh, stop it by entering a contact between those two blocks and in MATLAB you would see a graph that would be continuously uh, increasing which is also not what will happen in reality so what will happen in reality uh, this is probably the most familiar the most familiar example of that so every construction is in fact a uh, spring mass and damper damper construction so everything has a natural frequency but if the damping is big enough that doesn't really matter so in this case the Tacoma Narrows bridge was broken because there was a, a natural frequency but uh, the the weird thing is what was this natural frequency because the wind is not gonna blow one time and then the other direction and then the other direction again so uh, what happened here was vortex shedding at a certain wind speed there was a certain vortex behind the road and the cables and this vortex was in the natural frequency of this bridge and then it broke so in most constructions when the damping is not enough the damping is too low the construction will fail uh, when uh, it is excited in its natural frequency which is happening over here so uh, if you if you would have a, a, a stronger spring then when you enter the natural frequency it would just increase in movement uh, no matter how small the force the, the movement would increase because the energy is stored more and more within the system so in SOLIDWORKS motion this is what happens the spring goes to a, a, a negative uh, force so that means the the natural frequency is not uh, and yeah, not further taken into account anymore so that means that when I switch back to the graph here that I cannot check this point of the graph it's too too high too much in its natural frequency so in reality I would have to assume that my construction would have been broken in this case and when I go to a very high frequency I can do that over here as well and go, go to the 100 Hertz I've plotted a tenth of the speed in this case and when you go to that frequency and play it you see that there's hardly any movement anymore because the the force the force that I've entered over here the fo this force it's fluctuating so it has a frequency of 100 hertz right now you can see that uh, sorry 100 radians per second so 16 hertz uh, at this frequency the the force is fluctuating over here and it's so high that you will never accelerate the mass enough so that you keep a constant movement so that's what you see in those graphs over here uh, it, it just keeps fluctuating and when I go back to this graph you can see that here if you just keep on increasing the frequency in the end there will be hardly any movement at all which I can already see in the in the simulation the motion analysis that I've just done so I've uh, I've put the bars here at the various frequency that I've analyzed in SOLIDWORKS motion so this one is in the natural frequency so you, you get problems in this case the spring constant is the most important of the whole uh, movement so here I've got this low frequency analysis in this case the spring constant is actually the only thing that matters because the movement is so slow the movement is so slow that the mass is light enough so it doesn't have so much effect and the damping was chosen low in this case but when the the frequency is low the only thing that really matters is the spring constant which you can see in this graph over here this this value is one divided by the spring constant that I have so it's a uh, one divided by 500 that's this value and when I multiply that with the input force which is uh, which is 10 newton you get 10 times that value of 0 0.02 uh, 0 0.002 and you get this final value of the displacement of 0 0.02 so this value is the input 
multiplied by the force that I see over here. In a uh, in this f frequency, I cannot analyze that because too many weird things are happening in this natural frequency, also in SolidWorks, and in reality, probably this would be broken. And in this case, I've uh, I've done a, a last thing that I want to verify. I've plotted less time, as you can see in the name. I've plotted uh, less time so I can see whether or not the uh, construction is out of phase. So when I go back to the graph, the phase shift when using a low frequency is zero. So the input force uh, runs equal to the output displacement. And when I continue at the end at a high frequency, so here I've got a phase shift of 180 degrees. And I can see that in this graph over here. So good to line up the the vertical axis of this graph. I see they're lined up pretty good right now. So then if I open another window and keep this window next to the graph, I can see that when this graph has its highest point, this graph has its lowest point, which is the definition of 180 degrees phase shift. So I can I can see that in these graphs, that's why I made the extra plot and the extra motion analysis with less time so I can actually analyze that. So if I go to this graph over here, it's actually uh, too many fluctuations to analyze that conveniently so that's that's why I made this extra plot this extra analysis with another plot so that's uh, what I had to tell about second order systems thanks for watching